Hello everyone, welcome back to Preface Nomad Junior. My name is Mr. Mark and today we'll be going through how to make a shooter game. So this game is actually the second part of the shooter game project, which means that if you don't have the first part yet, make sure you tune into our video from yesterday. Now back to the project. So just a little review, what we have here is a character that keeps moving in different random positions. And when I click on it with my target, I will add a score. Now notice how there are sounds appearing too. And when I get all the way up to 10, there will be an explosion supposedly. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna pick off from where Miss Athena left off yesterday and continue with her project. So I'm just going to rename it quickly to my own and we will begin. So, the first thing remember is that our enemy here, once it reaches to a score of 10, it will explode, right? So I'm just going to add one more costume into the enemy here. I want to add an explosion costume. You will see it used later. So I'm just gonna go into flat icon right now. And then I'm going to find I'm going to find explosion. So explosion. And then I'm just going to choose this one here and I'm just going to download it. And then I'm going to upload it back into my game. So I go to costumes here and I upload it. Explosions, let's find it, let's find it right there awesome all right so to begin with we want to make this target follow our mouse pointer wherever we go right so we click into the target part here and then let's just make a very simple code which is when the green flag is clicked i'm going to make sure that it forever follows my mouse pointer so go to mouse pointer. Now the second thing we do is that we need to switch this enemy part. We need to switch it back to our cartoon character in the beginning, which is why over here, when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to make sure that it switches the costume back to our cartoon character. So the enemy right here. Now, if you realize it might be a little bit big right now, so it's kind of actually easy to hit. I'm going to make it smaller, so I'm going to set to a size of around 60. Now, if you're comfortable with 100, that's completely fine. If you feel like the game is too hard, you need a big character, that's fine too. But I'm going to set to 60. And when I press the green flag, awesome. So now my target follows and my enemy is smaller. Now, the next thing I want to do is to make the character constantly go to a random position. So the easiest way of doing this is to definitely just get a forever and then make it go to random position, right? And perhaps add a weight there. The problem with this is that sometimes when this happens, the character might only appear as half a character. So it might not be that easy to click. In order to prevent this, I'm going to do something that I actually did in the previous projects. So what I do here is that I make it go to a specific position. But this time I'm going to set a range of positions it can go to. So here I go to operators and I just pick the pick random block and I put it in both the X and the Y parts. I'm going to see what's the highest and most left this character can go. So the highest it can go to is around minus 180, I believe, and 125. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to make the X minus 180 and 180. And the Y, I'm going to make it minus 125 to 125. Okay, so now our character moves forever. It's a bit too fast once again, so I make a 0 0.1 here or 0 0.5 so that it appears at the speed. But no matter what, as you can see, the character will never ever go outside of the frame, as you can see. 
Now, I'm also going to add one more thing here, which is when I click it, supposedly, it needs to add the score. So when this sprite clicked, I'm going to create a variable called score. And then when the game first begins, I'm going to set the score to zero. And when the sprite is clicked, I'm going to change the score by one. I'm just going to make this a bit slower so that you guys can see the effect. So I'm just going to test it out. And for now, everything seems fine. I'm going to try clicking on it. Oops. And my score does go up. Now you can see right now my target is above the enemy, right? So this works for me currently, but I'm going to show you a potential issue. I'm going to stop the game first. So I know some of you guys, maybe in your costume, maybe you have a target where you actually have a red dot in between to kind of signify like, you know, an aim or something like that. So I'm just going to make like a red circle to signify this red dot. So it might look like this, right? And it might be covering the center here. So where the mouse is normally clicked. All right. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger for your reference so you can see it on the screen. Okay. Now I'm going to try play the game. So remember my target is on top of the enemy right now. You will realize no matter how hard I click, I actually can't get a score. And the reason why is that right now, the computer is detecting me clicking the target marker here and not the enemy. So in comparison, before, when I didn't have this marker, it was very easy for me as when I'm clicking it as this part is blank. So when I click the enemy, I can actually click through my target sprite. But what I did just now is that I added a red dot, like how some people have it. And once I do that, it becomes very hard to click on my enemy and add a score. So a potential way I can fix this is that I always make it go to the back layer no matter what. So it wouldn't matter whatever type of aiming sprite I use, it will always head to the back. So now no matter what, I will always get an added score. So now we will need to set a condition where when the score is equal to 10, our enemy will explode, right? So let's go to controls and let's get a forever and then let's get an if then block over here. In the if then block, we're going to say if our score is equal to 10, so let's get the operators, let's get the equal block out. Let's go to variables and get our score block out over here. So if our score equals to 10, what should happen is that our enemy here would turn the costume. So his costume would change to explosion. So I'm just going to not play the game. I'm just going to purely click on it. So the score function should still work. And now when I click it up to 10, there we go, boom. Now I can actually make my explosion more interactive by changing its size. So let's try to do that. Here I'm going to change the size by 100. So even bigger. So green flag, I'm going to pause it. I'm going to get my score up to 10. And it happens very quickly, right? So if you want to make it like a kind of booming, slowly explosion, what we can do is that I can get the repeat block here and I can make it repeat, changing the size by 10, 10 times. So what this does is that it grows at a slower pace so it won't just instantaneously become bigger. So let's see in effect, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and boom. What happens if I click on it very quickly? So move it back here, and then I'm just going to click as much as fast as I can. So right now, I get straight to score 13, and at the same time, even if that happens, it still switches costume to an explosion. And the reason why is that even in that split second, the score might have been 10, and whenever the score is 10, it will automatically switch the costume to explosion. Now I know there were cases where some computers, they do not have that ability. So they might not detect clicks that quickly. So there might be an opportunity where the score goes over 10 
and the computer doesn't detect it when the score is 10. And hence, the costume doesn't turn into an explosion. Now what we can do is that to prevent this, we can go to operators again and we can grab a bigger than block. So it's called a larger than block or bigger than block. And for here, we can change this to score bigger than nine instead. And when we do this, no matter what happens, even if we click it quick enough so that it becomes a score of 14 and it misses the 10, your costume will still become an explosion. So today we really delved into the use of these blocks called operator blocks. So as you can see, there's a lot of numbers involved in them. So their main purpose is actually really to control and customize the way that numbers work in your own project. So one of the final things we're going to do is that we're going to add some sound effects. So if you see to the left over here, we have these blocks called sound. And what they do is that they basically control any sounds that happen or any sounds that are played in the project. So if you remember, in the original project, if we touch or if we actually click on the enemy, supposedly a sound should appear. So before I use the tom drum and over here, I guess I'm going to choose it again. So there's a lot of sounds that you can choose from. I'm just going to use the drum here. I'm going to use the tom drum here. And after I selected this drum, it will show in this sound section over here. I go back to my codes and then I play the sound tom drum right after I change the score. So let's see what happens. So now, when I click on it, there you go, the sounds are right there. Now, if you remember, or maybe you might want to make some other types of variations. For example, you want to make an explosion when it explodes, right? So if you have prepared an explosion sound, what you can do is that you can upload it to. So I have one, fortunately, I have one here. And then let's see an effect. So I'm going to just play the sound explosion when my score reaches more than nine. So I place it underneath my repeat 10 block over here. Awesome, so let's try it again. And there's an explosion. But what you realize is that it continuously grows bigger and explodes. So what do I do? What I can do is that I can go to controls and I can get one more block here called stop all. This stops any codes from running afterwards. So now when I'm finished, so when I play the game and I reach up to more than 10 and the explosion occurs, it will just completely stop. So let's do a little recap on what we've learned today. We started off by learning about the operator blocks and there are light green blocks which control the way that numbers are used inside of codes. The second thing we learned about is the sounds blocks and what they do is that they control the way that sounds are played in our project. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the project. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up with our daily content. I'm Mr. Mark and this is Scratch Tutorials on Preface Nomad Junior.